All right, I want to tackle a very honest question here, and that is, is design thinking dead? Hey, has design thinking finally run its course and we're on to something else? Uh, all right, so that's, I want to jump into that in this episode. But hey, welcome back to Unlocking Innovation. My name is Kedron Rhodes, and if you are looking to deliver new value to your customers or your organization, hey, you've come to the right place. This is where I share my 20 plus years of experience helping leaders just like you do just that, deliver new value. All right, so I wanna jump into this and explore some thoughts here on, is design thinking dead? Has it run its course? So with that, I'm gonna set up a little context with my experience with design thinking and actually the the prompt for making me think or even ask the question, is design thinking dead? Uh, Then we'll just kind of wade into uh, wh- where I think it's at and where I think it's uh, going and if it still has a life of its own. So rewind the clock. Uh, a little over 10 years ago, I was first introduced to design thinking while working at a publishing company under the mentorship of a design leader who had spent uh, well over 10 years at IDEO. Now, if you are familiar with design thinking, then you're likely familiar with the name IDEO. They were in many ways synonymous for a better part of a decade and large part because IDEO is really championing the language around design thinking, the thought leadership around design thinking and really positioning themselves as a consultancy that delivered innovation in this new method, in this new way of of working uh, called design thinking. And to kind of like highlight that point, uh, when we, when, when this, uh, when my design mentor, uh, would kick off a new meeting with a client, he would reference a 2006 list from fast company where it highlighted IDEO as one of the most innovative organizations in the world. And I think that speaks directly to, uh, where design thinking was in that moment in 2006, in those, uh, early 2000s where IDEO had really been championing design thinking as a breakthrough way to realign uh, organizations towards their customers. And I I think it's a testament that they made it on this list of fast companies, you know, 50 most innovative uh, organizations. I haven't looked much at, uh, I haven't looked much for IDEO on those lists in recent years, but I don't recall seeing them listed anywhere. But a lot has happened since 2006, and I kind of wonder if design thinking um, is kind of no longer an innovative approach. It's no longer breakthrough or it's no longer in vogue. I'm not really sure. So around that time, uh, of course it was, design thinking was the, a buzzword that it was hard to escape when you're talking about innovation or you're reading content or literature about innovation, design thinking was really um, uh, everywhere. And it became kind of synonymous with creativity in a lot of ways. I would hear or see design thinking referenced as a way to just be creative, uh, to help your organization think uh, creatively uh, about problem solving. And I think that in some ways that might actually be true, but I think maybe by reducing it to that, that kind of simple notion of a, you want to be creative, do design thinking that, uh, it kind of undermines the credibility of design thinking in many uh, organizations, especially the leaders I work with, um, that are, have, are expecting results, expecting, um, uh, outcomes. So, uh, that leads me to just kind of think back to a recent engagement that I had with a client where we spent um, he, several days together working through a design thinking framework where we took a deep dive into understanding customers. We took a deep dive into uh, figuring out what is what are their motives, what are what's driving them to do the things that that we're observing them doing, and we. Uh, put some ideas together. You know, we had brainstormed, we ideated, we uh, uh, pulled those insights into prototypes and we tested them. And at the end of this engagement, 
over the course of several days, not once did I mention the word design thinking. And that actually, in in reflecting back on that, it's actually what led, led me to wonder, is design thinking dead? Does the language of design thinking matter anymore? And I think there's a couple of things that are kind of in, in kind of informing that question. One, obviously, you know, the work of design thinking is how I structure the engagement. Um, the methods from Kumar's book, 100 Design, uh, uh, 101 Design Methods, drastically informed the way that I structured uh, the engagement. And it, of course, uh, positioned the this client in a different way than they were used to thinking, thinking about their customer. Uh, but no, nowhere did I mention design thinking. Uh, it was just simply the, the methods and practices that kind of get rolled into design thinking. And we spent uh, the time together talking about how to deliver new customer value. And we talked about how to gain deeper understanding of where customers truly are. Um, not talking about design thinking. That was, that would, looking back, that di- talking about design thinking would have just been a distraction. So uh, a couple things kind of informing why I think design thinking doesn't get as much uh, play as it used to. And one of the big reasons I think is because so many other disciplines have adopted the practice of design thinking and just kind of brought it into the way that they work in a way that they're those methods, that way of thinking, that those practices just get absorbed into other disciplines and that language gets lost. So whereas before it used to be, hey, I got to go talk to a design thinking expert or I need to uh, brush up on my design thinking methodologies or I'm going to try to to introduce design thinking to an organization uh, in order to uh, deliver new customer value. Well, now organizations are maturing around those principles and those practices that made design thinking valuable, and they're baking it into things like user experience, customer experience, product management. Um, uh, These disciplines are all focused on understanding customer better. They're focused on iteration. They're focused on um, using observation uh, to inform the the thing that they pursue, the next feature or the next uh, service. Um, so many of those practices all came from the methodologies of d- design thinking, but are just getting absorbed into other disciplines. Um, so I think that's that's a, I think that's in, informing why I don't see design thinking talked about as much. And I think uh, uh, when I look at job descriptions, for example, for those roles, product management or uh, being a product-led company, or when I see some some uh, someone talk about UX or customer experience, they're often using the language that comes from design thinking without ever actually talking about design thinking. And I think that actually leads to this next uh, observation that as customer focus is, is now on everyone's radar, I think for a long time, especially when I think back to when I first started my career, uh, in design and innovation, um, 22 year, 23 years ago, um, a lot of the conversation around, uh, innovation back then was around, uh, organizational or operational excellence, uh, reducing waste. So things like lean things, uh, uh, um, six Sigma, uh, process improvements. The, like how, how can we, how can we make the act of delivering value more efficient. That was really consuming the the conversation around innovation. And kind of shortly behind that, then there was this whole wave of like those operational efficiencies led to breakthroughs in new ways of uh, building materials. So the material world had just a big, big thrust of new things that you could do, new, new materials that never existed before. And, uh, we've got new capabilities and that led to the design world to dream up new things that, that just couldn't be built before. Um, and those, those new things reflected the, the characteristics of the new technology of the new material, not necessarily the 
the characteristics or demands that customers had. Introduce design thinking. And um, I think that uh, this refocus on positioning our offering from a customer's perspective is now just kind of like baked into the way many organizations work. And it's not all organizations. I get it. There's there's plenty of organizations that are technology first or feature first and not necessarily customer first. Um, but I think there it's becoming more and more common to hear a customer first approach to uh, delivering value. Um, so I think that's I think there's that's a big piece of why I don't see design thinking talked about quite as much anymore is because organizations are baking those competencies into other roles and they're as a whole becoming more focused on the customer. Um, and so I think there's a couple other things that are kind of putting a pinch on design thinking. And one of those I think is that design thinking in many ways did not actually deliver on the promise. Um, maybe the promise of creativity, like if we just need to find new ideas. Um, but many organizations that that I've worked with over the past and it's, you can discover these conversations online where organizations that invest in an outside consultant, jump in, lead a design thinking uh, workshop or activity or a sprint of work um, for three months, six months, uh, quite often result in nothing for the business, no real value. Uh, a lot of great creativity happens, a lot of great insight is surfaced, but getting innovation out the door kind of dies. And as I think design thinking kind of took it, took it on the chin uh, for many organizations, because yeah, it's not enough to have a bunch of new great ideas that are focused on the customers if the organization can't get behind it to deliver. So uh, there's a, I think a, uh, I think there's some tarnish on design thinking from that perspective. And then when I think about uh, organizational innovation or organizations that are trying to do new things, there's design thinking is just one of many different levers that you can pull. Maybe sprint is a lever that, that an organization is focusing on or lean or agile. I think there's just a handful of other ways of delivering innovation that are just as relevant or maybe even more relevant uh, than design thinking. Um, so I think that's also kind of put a pinch on why, why we don't see design thinking maybe as much as we did, um, or maybe as much as I did, I guess, 10, 15 years ago. So is design thinking dead? Um, I think yes. I don't talk about design thinking much anymore. Um, as a, at, when I'm in, in the work with a client. Now, I think the design thinking actually has some selling points. There might be some kind of brand equity that might be useful for individuals to reference in order to bring those ideas to the surface. So it might be useful for, for individual to say, hey, I want to bring a design thinking expert in, or I want to ratchet up my skills in design thinking as a way to kind of like leverage that brand equity around design thinking to help the organization forward. Um, but for, I guess for myself, when I jump into the weeds with, with a client, we're not talking about design thinking anymore. We're talking about how to structure the engagement so that the outcome is innovation. The outcome is new value that is shared between the customer and the organization. Um, so I think everything about design thinking is still important. Um, the practice, the mindset, the methodology, that that approach, I think is absolutely important. But uh, everything that is important isn't design thinking. And I think we're starting to realize that in the innovation space. Um, and I'll, I'll say that again. Everything about design thinking is important. But everything important isn't design thinking. So the next time you are faced with delivering new innovation, delivering new customer value in your organization, and uh, uh, you reach for design thinking, take a step back and realize that, yeah, it's gonna, you, you might need the practices or the thinking that design thinking has to offer, but you're also gonna need more than that in order to actually get new innovation out the door. All right, so, hey, that's, that's all I had for that. Um, 
I, I hope this is helpful. Hopefully it's got you uh, thinking about design thinking and the language and how, how we use design methods to drive innovation. Hey, maybe you completely disagree. Maybe you think design thinking is still has a uh, world of untapped potential in front of it. If so, I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, you shoot me an email at, uh, you can reach me at kedron at kedronroads.com. And uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on that or uh, ping me on LinkedIn, have a conversation there as well. And uh, um, until then, I'm going to continue to use design thinking methodologies and the way of thinking to drive innovation forward and uh, talk about it probably less and less. Hey, I'll talk about it here in the podcast because I think uh, it still has some brand equity that's important. But um, in client engagements, design thinking is kind of winding down for me. All right. I hope you are all well, and uh, I look forward to having these conversations uh, with you down the road.